Hey, how's it going everybody? If you have not been to my channel before, my name is Victor Sanchez. I've been making videos about Mexico, building in Mexico, investing in Mexico, vacation trips, and um, things that I believe that could help you overall, your overall decision about moving, living, or investing in Mexico. And today we're going to talk about a little bit about what is happening to the peso. Why has it gone up towards the dollar? Why is it losing ground um, in the last few, actually few years, few months? The peso has gained against the dollar, essentially making it a little bit more complicated for foreigners and expats, but uh, strengthening the economy of Mexico. So we see this big old spike right after the elections. And there's a couple of the key things that are happening that we I think we should understand if anybody's trying to come to Mexico, go to Mexico, and invest there. So um, one of the things that is discussed is that the economy of Mexico is going to tank, uh, mostly because of all the social programs that um, Claudio Sheinba or the president-elect is proposing. I want to talk about the show, social programs. Maybe in the next video, if you guys here leave me a note and say, hey, yeah, I want to talk about those things. I want to understand where Mexico is going. Is it going socialist? Um, I'd like to discuss that about that with you guys. But it's not the case what we're going to talk about today. There is something more specific that is driving the investors a little crazy uh, and wondering if they should invest in Mexico. So Claudia Sheinbaum basically in her interview today, uh, her call it, call it um, press conference basically, is taking on a bunch of questions. So I want to I want you guys to hear directly from uh, President-elect Claudia Sheinbaum on the question uh, regarding the economy. The young man that you'll see next on the video is basically asking him, uh, asking her, well, regarding the reforms that you're proposing uh, in the judicial system, well, the Mexico peso is basically losing its effect or the super peso is no more. Let's see what she has to answer with this. De que hay entre México y Estados Unidos para diferentes temas. Y en otro tema, eh, justo cuando se presentó o se anunciaba que la reforma del Poder Judicial pues podría ya este, discutirse, pues entonces el peso cae. Eh, y ayer comentaba que no hay preocupación eh, por esta discusión y nuevamente ayer el peso pues eh, cayó frente al dólar. ¿Qué se podría hacer o incluso cuál es este, el panorama que ustedes ven que, que esté cayendo demasiado frente al dólar? Eh, pues ya el superpeso pues perdió. No necesariamente. A ver, la economía mexicana es muy sólida. Eh, y uno de, de los elementos es el fortalecimiento del mercado interno, que fue una de las políticas. Right here, basically, she's given the answer that not necessarily the economy is losing power or the peso is losing power. Um, it's part of the, the economy in Mexico basically is strong. But nevertheless, there's things that need to be done internally to to grow more wider, uh, wider economy and to grow stronger in the internal economy of Mexico. So this is what she's explaining at that at this moment. Políticas cuando entró el presidente y que nos ha fortalecido y también el mejoramiento de el nivel de vida de las y los mexicanos con el aumento salarial. So right here, she's talking about. Some of the key things that the current president has done to strengthen um, the economy and the well-being or the livelihood of Mexico or just the life of the general life of Mexicans in general. So they're talking about um, better wages, um, higher minimum wage, and just overall different benefits. And she's just kind of reiterating those things to him. Con los propios programas sociales. Entonces, hay una agenda que se planteó previo a la elección. Right here, she's basically talking about there was a, an agenda previous to the, the, the elections of things that Mexico in itself wanted for its nation. So she's going to explain a little bit more of what those things are. Que se puso a consideración del pueblo de México. Porque la elección no solamente fue la persona, sino es un proyecto de nación por el que... So essentially, she's saying that previous to the election, 
the you know the people pretty much elected her because there is this program. Uh, they don't. The people are not electing her because of the person, but actually electing her because of the program. Votó el pueblo de México. Entonces, como lo planteé ayer, incluso hoy vamos a tener al rato una reunión eh, para ponernos de acuerdo con el equipo del gobierno del presidente Andrés Manuel López Obrador, los diputados, senadores, eh, cómo podría eh, generarse este diálogo, cuál sería la metodología eh, del que hablé ayer y la discusión sobre la reforma al Poder Judicial y otros temas. Basically here, she's touching on the reform that it's basically pushing all this concern uh, in the economy uh, a little bit to slow down. So she's basically saying right here that she's open to dialogue on how this would work, how the reform would look, how would it affect, what it would entail. Um, so she's kind of reiterating that, um, that although essentially within the words, okay, that although, yes, there's been a hit and there's uncertainties, there's still a project that has to be fulfilled uh, for the people and that there has to be a dialogue on how this is going to take effect. ...que están en la agenda pública. Lo importante es que sepa quién va a invertir en México, que hay certidumbre de la inversión en nuestro... Basically here she's saying that there has to be a certainty for those who are investing in Mexico and that Mexico is a good place to invest país porque hay estabilidad económica, hay estabilidad social, hay estabilidad. Basically that it's a good place because there's stability in our economy and because there is a socialist uh, stability within. La política y que en el marco siempre del cumplimiento de las normas en nuestro país, pues evidentemente toda esta relación comercial que hay con el mundo entero y particularmente con empresas de Estados Unidos, la relocalización de empresas, eso va a continuar. Eh, pero al mismo tiempo, pues hay una agenda del pueblo de México, hay eh, un proyecto de nación. Entonces, y ese también tiene que continuar y no hay por qué, no tiene por qué haber preocupaciones, ni de los inversionistas, ni porque nuestro país va a seguir siendo un país eh, cada vez más fuerte. Pero, pero preocupaciones de que se apruebe o sea por eso digo que hay que entender la reforma yo creo que todo el mundo en este país right here she's basically explaining that the new financial people the people the investors uh, they have to learn basically what this reform has to what it entails for them to be a little bit more secure she wants to reassure the investors that basically that this is uh going to create even more stability within the Mexican economy. Obviously, the understanding of how this reform is going to work uh, is still to be seen, but um, let's continue with just the end part of this video, and then uh, we'll continue our dialogue. If you are doing an interview, I'm going to propose that you do an interview. What do you think of the people of Mexico about the Poder Judicial? What is your opinion? Ustedes lo vieron en las, me acompañaron en las, eh, en los mítines de la campaña que preguntaba qué opinan de los jueces en México. Y lamentablemente, porque además hay muchas honrosas excepciones, la gente tiene una percepción de corrupción del Poder Judicial. Entonces, tiene que avanzar la reforma al Poder Judicial. Fue parte de lo que se planteó en la campaña y no tiene por qué haber preocupaciones porque finalmente es para la fortaleza de la justicia en nuestro país, para la fortaleza de la seguridad, para la fortaleza eh, del bienestar de las y los mexicanos entonces eh, puede haber alguna situación en estos momentos pero yo confío en que eh, la economía es sólida y que siempre va a haber diálogo con todos los sectores So basically, she's ending that part of the conference. This conference was actually a lot more longer than what I'm showing you. But um, essentially what she's saying that the concerns that the economists have on the reforms that are going to be done in the judicial system, um, basically, the people who are the, the, the financiers and the investors 
you have to understand that it's actually going to support, it's going to help the people of Mexico. It's, it's a concern that Mexicans have. Uh, understanding, basically, she was saying that the judicial system is corrupt and it has been corrupt in a way that it doesn't help the people. So what are the few things that are affecting the peso um, in a nutshell? Well, one is that there is uncertainty about what's going to happen to the judicial system. What uncertainty are they thinking about? Well, one of the things that they've been talking about is that they're going to be completely dismantled. Um, that's not really necessarily so. It could be dismantled if the, uh, the, the reform that's proposed takes into effect where people actually vote for the magistrates and for the Supreme Court judges. So right now what's on the table and still has to be clarified is whether what kind of, what, 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 what is it going to entail in the reform entirely? But one part of it is that the people get to vote for those who are in power in the judicial system. Essentially eliminating um, anybody who's been there or has barely started there and has is, has the right to be a judge for the next 15 years. So one of the biggest problems that, that Mexico has is in its security. And the, one of the reasons why Mexico can't advance in security is because of the corrupt judicial system. Many times Mexico has captured the people who should be, be captured in um, committing these crimes and placed into prison just for the judges in the Supreme Court to let them go. So that was one of the main issues. There's a lot of different little things. So during the years of Lopez Obrador, they, they stopped a lot of the projects via amparos. Amparos is just something that the United States doesn't have at all, but it's a form of protection supposedly for the people. However, they manipulate it in a way where it stops the project from advancing until the necessary steps have been followed. Well, yes, the necessary steps have to follow, but the amparos were being placed in a very irresponsible way. So what did the, the government do? They placed a reform that well, it essentially gave them uh, eminent domain was, is what United States has. It's basically, if the, the country sees fit or needed, for the benefit of all the people that this property has to be taken from you, it will be taken. It's happened here. I live in California, and um, when they were building the 210 freeway, they basically gave all of those uh, people eminent domain. Basically, they pay for the properties. And we're talking about expensive properties like an upland, um, Laverne, and those who who know about these areas, they know it's expensive areas. Nevertheless, government took over and did what they have to do for the benefit of the people. So those are the kind of things that the government has been placing that wasn't there before in order to help the community overall. So there's been a rumor saying that people are going to be expropriated from the properties because they're moving into a social um, area. Well, that's a lie. That's, they're not saying that at all. They've been just talking about um, being able to apply the eminent domain uh, laws into effect when there's a project that has to, for example, in, in Tijuana, they're trying to build a, a bridge that will link um, basically the entrance of, of Tijuana, uh, San Jacinto, all the way to the beach cities. Well, a lot of these people didn't even own the properties, but they got amparos and fought it to try to um, obviously get the most of it, but most of it was being done by the opposing parties supposedly fighting for human rights, but essentially they're fighting for themselves. So a lot of corruption had to do with all this stuff. So a lot of the projects are being held up because of this stuff. So that's one of the things that a lot of the investors are worried about. They're hearing these things and believing that so. So what Claudia Sheinbaum is saying right now is that that's not the case. We need to reinforce the judicial system, but also create an environment where the investors feel secure about its economy and its social um, obligations with the people. Okay, so with one of these, within the the reforms, um, or one of the reforms that are being proposed, is minimizing the hours the work week from 45 or 48 hours to 40 hour week. I, I talked about this in my last video. 
Well, obviously, that is a hit for a lot of people who abused the Mexican people for so long. So they would give them basically $100 per week for, say, okay, this is not the minimum wage, but it's $100 per week, and they would have to work basically six days a week. Well, how is that fair? What the government is trying to propose is that from a certain point on, that the, all the people who are the, all the business people, all the people who are bringing their businesses to Mexico, uh, do a fair wage, okay? Basically, pass the law where it's 40 hours versus 48 hours. Excuse me if you hear that noise. That was my old air conditioning. Um, <clears throat> so they're trying to make it fair for the society. It's not so, but for those who have businesses and want to open manufacturing shops, they're kind of rethinking this. Whether they want to go to India, want to go to Mexico, the big advantage that Mexico is always going to have is that it's near shoring. They're going to have to pay hundreds and thousands of dollars in shipping. Plus, um, Mexico, regardless of what's going on, is always going to be a friendly country with the United States. So you have that issue where people are saying that they're going to be expropriated from the properties. That is a lie. Um, that's not so. It's related more to business. Well, a lot of these also businesses that were in Mexico, they, a lot of these businesses were being protected by the judicial system in place, but being protected in a way that benefited the basically the business owner, but not the general public. In many ways, they weren't even paying their taxes. Uh, even, even so, like, I, I think it's Claudio X or one of the main investors in Mexico, Mexican, uh, um, not from the United States, rather clean, but from Mexican. He didn't, he hasn't paid, the, the owner of Copel, basically, he hasn't paid his taxes in forever. Or he has an amparo to protect them, saying that for X reason, it's not right, they're trying to get me, whatever X reason. So, Norma Pina, which is a judge, basically has basically swept it under the rug and has not addressed it whether to go forward or not, basically on a hold. And we're talking about billions of dollars that he owes in taxes. And uh, they're not trying to take those taxes in order for them to pocket to themselves. They're trying to take the ta taxes to be able to continue the growth of Mexico. So the core issue of the Mexico peso actually falling it's because the business people or the financial industry is worried about what's going to happen in the judicial system and what it entails to for businesses. The other thing is that Claudia Shane is an environmentalist. One of the things that a lot of company has done in Mexico and shame of Mexico and shameful for the people who are going over there, they have damaged the environment so much. There used to be a, a river called El Salto over there in Guadalajara. People who have been knowing this for a long time, that that river was beautiful at one point. Right now, it's just filthy black water that goes into the black waters. And, uh, and it stinks because of the little regulation that companies are being forced to uh, to comply with. Well, the reforms that are trying to be placed, put in place, that has to do a lot of it with the judicial system, they can't be established until the the government is reinvented from the ground up. And so there's enough governors, there's, a gov there's enough senators, there's enough um, House representative, re representatives, and now a president that is willing to make these changes and force companies that didn't comply before into compliance. So I do believe that the vessel is going to struggle for some time. I, I was thinking at the beginning that it's probably going to take a week or so. I actually believe that it's actually probably going to get just a little bit worse before it starts turning and understanding what's going to happen with the justice system. So right now, there's going to be talks for next two months. But it, right about in October or in September, when the president, when the cabinet takes over, this is when they want to enter the, the new um, reform, okay, or constitutional change. Once that is revealed, then the companies will know where they stand. The finance, the financial crews of this world will know where they stand. Some will flee and some will gather up together with Mexico. 
but I don't expect it to get worse because obviously these changes have to do with the change or this person has to change with what's going on with the reforms and uncertainty. But once uh, Mexico is able to stabilize their security and all those things that come with it, um, companies will want to even come more and more. So it might be a few months um, before we see a change. So for a lot of us that like to send money to Mexico, it's a golden time. But uh, it's not something that we should always be completely happy about because at the end, the people in Mexico are the ones who are affected by this. All right. All right, guys. So hopefully this helps you just a little bit for those who are sometimes not understanding what's going on. If it did help you, please give me a thumbs up. If you like this type of videos, let me know because this is something that I could do if that's what you guys want. In addition to the home build and the properties that I usually try to post. All right, guys. So I bless you guys till next time and keep smiling. Things are going to get better or will they get worse before they get better? I don't know. Till next time.